hello everyone uh, we will continue with our lecture series last class we saw this uh, dynamic programming and uh, we realized that actually it uh, it's a very good uh, approach in general in the, in the sense that it, uh, it gets into this uh, closed form solution of control however we at the towards the end of the lecture we also saw that uh, it actually results in this uh, huge computational difficulty and all which bellman term is curse of uh, dimensionality so yeah, there are ideas there which to to kind of avoid that and then uh, get some meaningful solutions uh, at least for limited class of problems actually so we'll see that in this particular lecture uh, one approach which is called as approximate dynamic programming and here you'll see some sort of a fusion between these two ideas of uh, calculus of variations and dynamic programming actually okay. and followed by that we'll uh, we'll use those those results in this uh, method called adaptive critique and a variation of that in a little bit uh, computational more efficient sort of ideas there which is called single network adaptive critique actually okay. so let us get started there okay. so this is the outline of this particular lecture first we'll say study what is approximate dynamic programming and then we'll uh, try to see what is adaptive critique design okay. followed by the single network adaptive critique and we'll see examples where we'll give some comparisons between uh, I mean performance comparison between AC and and SNAC. Okay, so that we'll see in two three example problems actually. Okay. So let us see the first thing first, uh, which is approximate dynamic program actually. So uh, everything will happen in discrete time domain here, and uh, so uh, the integral will substitute like a summation and things like that actually. So the objective is uh, still very very similar to what you have seen before, and that means to to optimize this j, which is a cost function. Uh, so find a u k so that you can optimize this actually. In other words, uh, formally speaking, to find an uh, admissible control u k, which minimizes this meaningful cost function given this way, but it is also subject to the constraint of system dynamics, which is on the form this way actually. Okay, okay with appropriate boundary conditions, and this entire class will assume that n tends to infinity. That you, we are talking about infinite time problems actually. And typically, these are in, when you talk about infinite time, these are typically regulator problems. Uh, okay. So even though the the generic cost function will be used for for deriving results and all, most of the examples that will follow will have quadratic cost function actually sitting there. All right. So we write this uh, first thing is uh, this j. Okay. We start from something like j k. Remember, k starts from one, then it's j. Or you can define J K starting from K itself actually, wherever wherever that is, and then n minus one actually. Okay. So we we define this uh, cost to go from time T K is something like J K. So then there will be some other variable here. We substitute this uh, K tilde sort of thing, which is uh, I mean the dynamic variable sort of thing. But K tilde varies from K to n minus one right now. So this cost function cost to go from time T K that is J K. Is written something like this, and obviously, if you just take out the first term, that is k tilde equal to k one for one term, and then from k plus one to n minus one. Okay. So this, if you just take out it with k, then that is nothing but psi k, and then k plus one to n minus one is nothing but k minus one. Eh, sorry, j k plus one. So as I told you in the previous lecture, this is the something called utility function at time t k, and this is something called cost to go from time t k plus one actually. Okay. So, like the dynamic programming, we will again define this lambda k as something like del j k by del x k, okay. and then the optimal control equation will be in this form actually. Okay, Th that we know that del j del j k by del u k ultimately has to be zero basically, okay. because j k, uh, I mean, one of the conditions that needs to be satisfied is a necessary condition that needs to be satisfied is del j k by del u k has to be zero actually. Okay. So, what is del j k by del u k? If you go back, uh, if you go back to this j k definition, j j k is nothing but this psi k plus j k plus one. So, I substitute that, and then uh, I mean here I'll substitute that. So, j k is nothing but psi k plus j k plus one. So, this partial derivative del j k by del u k is nothing but this term plus this term actually. This term I'll keep it as it is because psi k is something that I I know from this this cost function definition and all that. So that will be a a direct derivative sort of thing. So I'll keep it that way. But this j k plus j del j k plus one by del u k the effect will be felt. That means j k plus one will be 
what out by u k through x k plus 1 that is the system dynamics actually. In other words, if I if I apply a control u k that will uh, result in some perturbation in x k plus 1 okay, because our system dynamics is like this right. If I apply a u k it will result in some difference in x k plus 1, but uh, about j k plus 1 is a function of x k plus 1 okay. So, because of that there will be some change in j k plus 1 actually and that I have to keep it actually. So, how do I keep it? I will keep it through this uh, chain rule of derivative actually. Yeah. Remember these are all vector matrix algebra, so you have to be slightly more careful about writing this chain rules and all that actually. Okay, we have seen some of this uh, partial derivative results, chain rules and all in the very beginning lectures, so we review this uh, matrix algebra and things like that actually. You can see some of those if you have forgotten that. So, this del j k plus 1 by del u k, okay, I am writing it as something like uh, partial derivative uh, chain rule sort of thing, write it this way. Okay. Now, what is this? This is nothing but by definition lambda k plus 1. Remember lambda k is defined as something like this del j k by del x k. So, lambda k plus 1 is nothing but del j k plus 1 by del x k plus 1. So, that is what is lambda k plus 1. So, ultimately what my equation tells me that this has to be equal to 0 that means, this expression has to be equal to 0 finally. Okay. This is my optimal control equation. However, how do I get this lambda k plus 1? That is the that is the bottom line actually. So, for doing that we need to go back to the other side of the story that is the coasted equation sort of thing ok. And uh, as I told this part can be evaluated from from uh, system dynamics actually this this particular term and this will be directly evaluated. Yeah. Okay. So, the coming back to this uh, this coasted equation this remember this is a definition of lambda k lambda k is nothing but del j k by del x k. Now, that is equal to this del psi k by del x k plus this term del j k plus 1 by del x k sort of thing. Okay. Now, remember this this particular thing ok. Now, psi k is a function of x k and u k both. So, this particular thing first first of all is a direct function of x k. So, ok it in a, in a given uh, example I mean typically it is a quadratic cos function. So, let me give something like uh, psi k. Psi k is nothing but uh, x k transpose q k r x k plus u k transpose r k u k in that kind of thing ok and some people put half actually. So, let me put that ok. okay. If you see that that way ok. However, remember that uh, our control u k is also a function of x k that is what we ultimately want actually ok some function phi of x k actually ok. So, what is happening here del psi k by del x k plus this term, but this particular term del s del psi k by del x k ok what you are interpreting is psi k is a function of state and control both ok. So, one thing is direct function direct partial derivative I can take it the second one is because control is going to be a function of state, I will also account for that and write this chain rule actually ok. So, the first term is direct, the second term is this one. Similarly, the this term when I talk actually, this term will be first actually j k plus 1 is a function of x k plus 1. So, this entire thing what you see here ok, whatever you see here is nothing but del x k plus 1 divided by del x k ok. This del x k this particular term ok this this term what I see here ok this entire term okay, is nothing but uh, this uh, del x k plus 1 by del x k transpose actually. Okay. So, this is this is again the chain rule of this this term this uh, del x k plus 1 by del x k this term ok and this term taken together is nothing but that actually ok. But this particular term again is one thing is okay, remember this x k plus 1 ok we just uh, saw that that x k plus 1 ok one second. ok x x k plus 1 is nothing but uh, f of x k u k ok. Right. So, that is again a function of uh, x k and u k both actually. So, we keep the keep all those uh, things in mind and write ok this particular term what you see here one term is direct ok because it is a directly a function of x k and the other term is uh, through u k, but u k is also a function of x k ok. So, this is what is kept kept here actually ok. 
So, just uh, this is a little bit tricky derivation I understand that, but uh, just follow a little bit bookkeeping here actually. First thing is uh, this is just from definition and this term we clearly explain that this is one is direct the other one is through u basically. Here also similarly this j k plus 1 by x k remember x, x k plus 1 will also be perturbed the moment you perturb x k. So, because of that this there is this is non zero that means this one comes directly from x k plus 1 perturbation actually. So, I first I write it as something like this term del x k plus 1 by del x k transpose times this one, but this particular one you can realize that this is a function of uh, this x k plus 1 is a function of both x k and u k and u k is a function of x k again actually. Yeah. So, this particular term is because of that first is directly then the second one is through u k basically. And I understand there is a small uh, little bit abuse of notation here, but I think uh, for because all parcel derivative I am writing it the similar uh, notation sort of thing, but uh, let us uh, ignore that for a second actually. As, as long as you understand what you are doing is fine actually. So, all these parcel derivatives are, are expanded this way actually. Now, once I do that I can uh, I can think about uh, okay, uh, reorganizing the terms and all that here. Remember this is nothing but lambda k plus 1 actually. So, what I do I will take the first term here and first term here and remember this transpose will nothing but this transpose plus this transpose which is something like this transpose into this transpose actually a b whole transpose is nothing but b transpose a transpose you can do that actually okay. Anyway, so the first term here and first term here and lambda k plus 1 from here. So, I will keep it this way. Then the second term you can see that del u k plus by del x k transpose is common here and this will be this transpose is also in the left hand side actually that will come after expansion. So, both of the terms will be in the left hand side, I will take out this this is common and write it that way. Okay. So, my lambda k is actually theoretically speaking is actually this big expression here actually, there is a, there is a transpose here by the way. Okay. Let me probably this got hidden, so let me write it this way, this is there is a transpose here actually. Okay. All right. So, this is what it is, however, if uh, we can we can see that that this uh, this equation on the optimal path this equation is also valid this is nothing but 0 actually. Okay. So, what we do here is uh, if I put it there this entire expression becomes 0 actually. So, that means if I am worried about only optimal path then my lambda k is nothing but only the first term actually okay. this is what it is. Okay. So, this is a recursive equation sort of thing that means if I know lambda k plus 1 I can know lambda k. And typically from boundary condition we know this lambda n actually and even if it is a uh, I mean finite time problem and all that we know lambda n is del phi by del x n and all that actually that way. Okay. So, we start from there and this actually tells us there is a backward recursive equation sort of thing and also remember in uh, in 2 point boundary value problem calculus of variation approach we actually have lambda dot equation, but lambda dot is typically propagated backwards actually. Okay. So, all these are compatible actually that way. Okay. So, what is the summary? Summary of necessary conditions is something like that uh, state equation is uh, is available to us. Then the co-state equation is something like this ok. Remember these are all functions of uh, state and control x k and u k and ob obviously lambda k plus 1 also here. So, I can write it as lambda k is some function of x k u k and lambda k plus 1 as well. And optimal control is ultimately a function of this one x k lambda k plus 1 remember this is the equation this is the equation if I solve for u k from here ultimately this is going to be a function of x k and lambda k plus 1 actually ok. Remember x k plus 1 will be substituted by that f of x k u k. So, that means, uh, what you get here is just a function of x k u k only basically ok. So, ultimately this optimal control equation can be written something like that. So, essentially it uh, the boundary conditions are also split. So, what you see observe here is uh, we actually landed up with something similar to what we known what you knew earlier in calculus of variation approach actually ok. So, we have state equation, co-state equation, optimal control and boundary condition that is what it was calculus of variation approach actually. However, we started with uh, something like uh, this utility function and all that actually in cost to go and things like that. So, these are the concepts coming from dynamic programming actually ok. And these are all happening in discrete domain. So, obviously, these are uh, some approximations involved and all that actually. So, that is why it is uh, approximate dynamic programming actually. Okay. Some references if you want to see some of these uh, derivations a little more carefully and all you can see this reference which is uh, very standard nowadays. Uh, it is actually a chapter written in, in a handbook 
Okay, the handbook is written for intelligent control uh, in 1992, about uh, 20 years back actually. Okay. But there is a nice chapter here uh, which, uh, which talks about approximate dynamic programming actually. Okay. And we can see our paper also where these, these derivations are summarized again actually. Okay. So, that is just one thing. But this paper will talk about more on what we are going to do next in uh, the adaptive critique and, and single network adaptive critique and all that actually. Okay. All right. So, this, uh, this adaptive critique designed for infinite time regulator problems, let us see that one first. Then we will talk about SNAC as in some sort of a extension of that actually. Okay. So, now here I assume that uh, you have some little bit idea of uh, neural networks uh, and if you do not have much of ideas, then nothing to worry so much. There are toolboxes available uh, in MATLAB and other softwares and all that, where uh, neural network training algorithms are available to experiment actually. Okay. And again, what is neural network training? You can think about neural network as something like a function approximation black box sort of thing, where uh, you, if you given some sort of input, you get some sort of output. But if your weights are selected properly, then you will get uh, proper output given a set of input actually. And how do you get this uh, weights adjusted properly? That requires some sort of training. And then that is, uh, that is a different uh, ball game altogether. There are various kinds of training available and all that. What you are interested here is a very standard uh, back propagation supervised learning, as you can supervised training. It essentially tells us that if my y, I mean, okay, the whole idea here is, uh, I can explain a little bit here. Let me, let me talk about something like a, some function of, okay, x and a bunch of weights actually, let us say, okay. Then x is known to me because that is an input, but uh, w is something not known to me actually. Now, what I what I think, what is the problem? Problem is uh, this is the actual output that I am getting from here after selecting a set of w's and all that. Little more, uh, little more explanation. I can think about w, I mean y, y equal to something like uh, w3, let us say uh, there is a reason for that, w3 transpose something like phi3 of x if I write it where phi 3 is a set of basis functions which, uh, which I select. So, I know about that actually. Then I will do something like I will take phi 2, okay. then I will multiply with uh, w 2 transpose and then I will take uh, entire thing something like uh, phi 1 okay. and then, okay. then uh, what I do is uh, I write uh, something like W1 transpose and this series can continue actually. Let me stop here because the, the is sufficient to do actually this much only. So, this is my Y actually. So, what I am getting here is uh, all these phi 3, phi 2 and phi 1, these are defined functions actually, predefined functions typically taken as sigmoid function, the tangent sigmoid things like that. Whereas, W1, W2, W3 are unknown parameters to be fixed and it needs to be fixed in such a way that given my set of x, whatever my input variable, my output variable should match that actually. Okay. So, for that, we have, so let us say we require some sort of a training data. That means, oh, oh sorry. Okay. That means, what I am telling here is, uh, let us say this y, okay, what I am telling, y is should be y star like that actually. Okay. That means, if uh, it is not y, it is not y star to begin with, but if my weights are selected properly, then y will behave like y star actually. So, obviously, there is an error delta y, which is y minus y star. Okay. And what I am doing here is, I want to collect a, I mean, kind of minimize a cost function, error cost function, let us say, something like half of delta y transpose delta y actually. Okay. So, this is actually a function of all these weights, the weights w1, w2, w3. So, what is done here typically is del E by del W 1 okay, equal to 0, del E by del W 2 equal to 0. Okay. Okay, this is uh, this is also del E by del W 3 equal to 0 like that. So, if you put it and then, then go through this chain rule of derivatives and all that, you will be able to come up with some sort of necessary conditions. And typically, this optimization is carried out in some sort of uh, numerical optimization sense actually. That means, this uh, Plus form solutions are typically difficult to get. Okay. So, this, this equation, so even though we know we do not put it. Okay. So, we try to directly start with some sort of initial guess values and then try to update uh, the sequential update sort of thing which will lead to this, uh, this uh, error minimization actually. That means, your y actual y will, will converge to y star, it will behave in the 
like a desired output in the in the trained domain wherever in the domain that is selected for training within that domain it is so going to mimic like that actually that's the whole idea of neural network synthesis training and all that actually if you interested you can uh, see many many books available for for neural networks actually okay now coming back what it tells us that if presented with proper input output data okay when that proper is again uh, you have to really do a careful job to to provide a proper training data basically then what it tells us that uh, there are training algorithms essentially error minimization algorithms they exist so that after training the network can capture the underlying functional relationship okay, these are not number fitting these are function fitting actually that means once the function is fit actually then uh, given a different data x, uh, x, remember x are bunch of numbers now actually so if you have fed a bunch of numbers and you got some y star and you have trained the network in such a way that delta y is minimum actually that means this weights are selected in such a way that delta y is minimum so that means the functional relation series captured so in other words if i give present a different set of input uh, state x actually whatever that is then i will again get some sort of a similar output that i would have otherwise got actually using all these uh, optimality i mean all these uh, ideal conditions what i mean actually okay so this is the idea of uh, neural networks so, and then there is a theorem which also tells us that a three layer network with sufficient number of hidden net hidden layers can approximate any continuous function within arbitrarily small error bound in compact set obviously okay so set has to be um, kind of uh, closed and bounded and all that actually okay, so, okay. okay let me let me complete that okay, in compact set all right <sighs> okay so this is uh, this is what the uh, basic uh, knowledge that we want that's all actually means there is a neural network which can approximate some underlying function there are training algorithm that exist which which, in, which can do the job for us okay and it uh, there is also a powerful theorem which tells us that only a three layer network something like this can approximate any continuous function okay that is uh, more important actually okay so that means there is some degree of uh, ge theoretical guarantee thing that that uh, comes along actually but still uh, so also remember uh, the way of selecting this w's the weight uh, weighting matrix dimensions and the function selections and all that are still art actually that means uh, there is no clear cut theory which will tell you what kind of functions that you need to select for 5 and 5 to 5 3 and uh, it will not also tell you what's the dimension of that that means what is the what the number of functions basis functions and weights that you want to select in each layer these are still subject to okay the uh, open question basically but normally it turns out that actually not a very large network it's about four five hidden layer neurons that will do the job actually okay now with this background what is uh, what is adaptive critic methodology let's say this is the methodology which tells us that let me let me now assume a neural network which i call it is action network for the all that it will do is given a set of state xk it will predict my uk that's my ultimate objective remember now if y is my uk here y is u then i have got a closed form solution for control basically okay just imagine that is this y is essentially okay this y is essentially my u function okay this is uh, my u okay. so uh, what i got okay what i what i got is actually a control which is a state feedback form actually okay so this is what uh, what i do actually there okay. however to get that okay there is a necessity of uh, knowing lambdas and all that and the information that we have is only xk okay so there is a necessity of another network which is called as critic network which will uh, nothing which will uh, do nothing but predicting lambda k actually okay so that means this network's job is to predict an optimal lambda k knowing xk and this network's job is to predict an optimal control uk knowing xk So ultimately, this is the network that we are interested in. Okay, but uh, on the way we need this also, and there is an interaction that will go on actually. That means while training action network, we will assume that critical network is optimal, and while train training critical network, we will assume that action network is optimal, and there has to be some sort of cycle training and all that. And ultimately, if everything converges, then uh, then we will tell that okay, this network that is converges here is nothing but my uh, optimal control solution actually. Okay. 
So, this is what it tells you finally, this section network leads to this optimal control solution, but that will happen only after mutually consistent training of both the networks. Okay. What are the advantages of this method before you see the actual steps and all that? This is applicable to for nonlinear problems in general without any linear or quasi linear approximation of the system dynamics. You can directly take the system dynamics as it is actually. It is also solutions for, uh, for a large number of initial conditions. Uh, solution, okay, so, uh, what you are look, looking for is some sort of a semi global solution and all that. Wherever the network is trained in that domain, it will, it will operate something like an optimal controller actually. Okay. We are getting a closed form solution. Remember that this expression what we saw here actually a closed form solution in a way. But this, uh, this will happen to be a closed form solution only within the domain of training. Okay. Wherever you have trained the network uh, within that uh, domain, it, this relationship is valid actually. Okay. So, because of that, it is uh, we can interpret that as some sort of a semi global solution and all that, uh, because the domain can be expanded as we like actually, the, at least theoretically. Okay. So, you are getting uh, something like a feedback optimal control in the domain of interest, okay. that is that is the advantage actually. This is something like a feasible computational load, even though problem dimension uh, increases and your control application duration increases and all that actually, still it is not like uh, infeasible to computational load like dynamic programming. You still need some time, couple of hours probably to train the network depending on the computer first and then software that you are using and all that. Still need uh, computational thing of the order of minutes and hours probably. But not like uh, uh, infinite uh, infeasible computational load. For example, if you really use this classical techniques for dynamic programming for a particular uh, aerospace guidance problem, uh, it takes about some 20 22 years altogether actually. So, that is not uh, we are not talking like that actually. Okay. Still minutes and hours, but still it is feasible actually. Then it is a self contained methodology, it does not talk about some other methods, solve it and then just end the network. So, that it does not talk about that, it is a methodology by itself actually. Okay. Ultimately, it leads to real time control because what you are getting is control as a closed form solution finally. So, it is given as a, after the training process is over, you have got the optimized weights already. So, uh, what you are doing here is just simply evaluating this this function u as a function of state actually. Okay. Now, the question is how do you do that? So, first thing is let us see how do you synthesize the action networks. By synthesis what I mean is uh, how do you come up with the, the desired values of the output actually. Okay. Remember action network takes x k as input and gives u k as output, uh, but this training process demands that you have a corresponding u k star which is the desired value of u k actually. Okay. So, how do you get that there? So, let us take it through and uh, the results that we have is uh, state equation, optimal control and, and co-state equation, you know that actually. Okay. So, we give some, uh, we assume certain network with some initialized weights and all that actually. So, we get some sort of a UK okay. and by the way, this initialization does matter and I will talk about a process of uh, good initialization also actually, but anyways, this, uh, after initialization uh, this x k, if I feed it to the network, I will get u k. And now that I have got x k and u k, I have got uh, I can feed that into state equation and hence I will get x k plus 1. And if I get x k plus 1, remember I am assuming that critic network is optimal here. So, this uh, using this optimized critic network, I will get lambda k plus 1. Okay. Now that I have got lambda k plus 1 and x k also available with me, I can feed it both lambda k plus 1 and x k in the optimal control equation and I will get u k star actually. Okay. Now, given this input, this should be my output, or this is my actual output. So, there is an error between the two. So, using this error minimization algorithms and all, I can I can adjust the weights. That is that is my training actually. So, this training process continues uh, like this. Okay, and remember this is even though it is can be a single point, but ideally speaking, we are to, we typically do this uh, I mean this uh, batch processing sort of thing. That means you take a a set of uh, I mean state vectors that means let us say um, 100 states together, I mean 100 states means uh, let us say the system has x1, x2, x3, then uh, the value for x1, x2, x3 selected 100 times actually okay, from the domain. So, we have 100 uh, things like that and 100 outputs like that. So, we have this batch uh, training algorithm where the cost function accounts for uh, error in the each component of the actually. Okay. So, the idea here is if you do that batch processing, the, the local minimum trapping possibility is minimum actually. Okay. 
So, that is why you do that, but I think for each of the state that you take, you will get each uh, corresponding UK star actually that way. So, you have this error and then try to optimize this weights based on that information actually. So, that is external network training. What about critic network training? Okay. This critic network training will talk about something like this. We have this uh, x k, I mean give you lambda k, but we need to get a lambda k star, it is a desired lambda k. Okay. So, how do you do that? Uh, this is like this, you got x k, you can also feed that in the action network which we assume is already optimal, then you get uh, some sort of optimal control u k. Now, x k and u k is available, so we got x k plus 1. And remember this uh, there are two assumptions here, one is action network is optimal and critic network that you are going to train for the T k is also assumed to be optimal at T k plus 1. The reason being uh, finally, my boundary condition is known for uh, lambda n is actually a function of x n. Okay. So, that means, uh, I know a final condition actually from the boundary condition sense actually. So, I, ca I can assume that my future time, my, crit my critic network is already optimal actually and in, in fact, it uh, that entire uh, observation gives us some sort of a training approach for critic network actually. In other words, for finite time problems, we will like to train the network first using this uh, this boundary condition and then proceed backwards actually. For infinite time problems, uh, lambda final I mean final value of lambda happens to be 0. So, we train it in the in the domain of uh, very close to 0 in all that actually and then try to enlarge the bound and all that that way. Okay. But anyway, coming back, uh, what it means is uh, the critic network is uh, is already optimal at t k plus 1. So, that means, if I feed it, I will get a lambda k plus 1 also. Now, I got x k and lambda k plus 1. So, using coasted equation, I will get it desired lambda and again, I can train this based on this error value between the two actually. All right. So, this is the procedure. Uh, if I train external network, assuming critic network is optimal and the way and the vice versa, but also remember, these are on, on the way, we are using state equation optimal control equation as well as coasted equation. So, all the three equations are getting used and hence after mutually consistent training, we will get this uh, optimal control basically. How do you initialize the network? As I told that is also important and for initialization, uh, this is what uh, standard method that we propose uh, that okay, if you linearize the problem first and formulate something like a uh, problem uh, in the linear uh, domain actually. That means, uh, you have this uh, uh, okay, formulate a okay, but uh, so there is a small error here. Formulate a rather not lumped per se, it is a LQR problem, okay, for linear quadratic regulator problem, okay, because your cost for a state equation becomes linear and cost function is quadratic. So, it is a LQR problem and obtain the LQR solution for that. This solution will tell us this is this is our standard result coming from Ricard equation and things like that as the discrete optimal control solution. I mean that uh, that is also one lecture I have already covered actually, you can see that if you want. So, lambda k is uh, S d into x k and u k is minus k d into x k, where S d and k d are available from this LQR solution. So, by solving this Ricard equation and all that actually. So, now because these relationships are available, you can actually train the networks using these relationship that is called pre-training actually. So, you start with very arbitrary set of weights, but then first you train the network so that the networks can mimic this relationship at least. That means, they are actually mimicking this uh, or they are actually predicting this optimal control uh, relationships for linearized version of the problem actually. Okay. So, that actually gives us some sort of a good initialization. So, that the, the nonlinear problem training can happen quickly actually. Okay. Another alternative ideas also exist that you can also obtain some sort of a control solution from other techniques and let us say using dynamic inversion. Then for a known state, assume that this solution is already optimal, even though it is really not optimal and then you can compute the associated co-state. But this is a tricky, tricky thing here because remember the control is actually a lesser dimension, but the co-state is actually a higher dimension actually. So, you will invoke some sort of a pseudo inverse and all that where uh, I personally sometimes do not like actually. If the dimensional discrepancy is high, you have one control and let us say in 8, 9 states, then obviously this is not a good approach actually. Okay. But if it is something of compatible dimension, it is a three, 3 stage 3 control or probably something like 3 stage 2 control like that, then you can use this actually. Probably. But the advantage here is you are not using this linearization technique, you are not linearizing the problem actually. Okay. Already, so, so if you do that, then you can train the networks based on these control and co-state solutions, uh, which you can use it actually for actual training. 
So, this is the idea of say, adaptive critique, but on the way as I told we also have this idea of single network adaptive critique. Okay. So, what happens here is if you go back to this approach this uh, idea here there are actually two networks. So, essentially it is something like uh, uh, okay, I forgot to tell you that okay this uh, this training procedure that you are talking action and critique you first you train the action assuming critique network is optimal then you go to train the critique network assuming action is optimal. Well, what are you are doing here? you are assuming critique is optimal and you are you are changing this actually. So, what you are telling here is this action network is uh, not yet fully trained with partially trained let us say, but using this I am actually training the coasted equation, but once I train the critique network I have actually changed this network already here. So, there is a necessity of retraining the action network again and uh, once I do that uh, whatever action network I assumed in the critique network training here is already trained. So, I again have to come back to critique network and train actually. So, this process of what you are seeing here action network training and critique network training this needs to be mutually consistent that means, you come once you train critique network go back to action network uh, train that again then once you are done with that come back to the critique network and train it again once you are done go back to that and then train it again like that actually. And after a while you will find that uh, no further training is necessary in either of the cycle and that is where we call that the mutually consistent training has happened actually ok. So, that is called cycle training sort of thing. So, the observation here is if the cycle training is necessary because this two network structure basically. Now, can you get rid of that because cycle net to cycle training is typically first of all it is computationally intensive. Second thing there is a possibility of uh, misguiding actually. In other words, if one network goes where the other one will also go where actually. So, uh, here the idea comes uh, something like this uh, it can be done provided the critic network is actually uh, remodify I mean kind of uh, instead of assuming lambda k is output what about assuming lambda k plus 1 is output rather ok. Then let us interpret what is going on and, and see what is going on actually. And the assumption here is uh, most of the time as we seen in uh, like derivations and then uh, derivation of approximate learning programming and all uh, your u k is going to be a function of x k and lambda k plus 1. So, all that I need is u k is some sort of something like a explicit closed form solution in the form of x k and lambda k plus 1 which is typically true for most of the cases actually. Now, once that is there then what it tells us is ok if I if I just use a network one single network which will give me x k as a function of I mean lambda k plus 1 as a function of x k then if I know x k I know lambda k plus 1 and I know the optimal control solution as some sort of like a explicit solution symbolically available as a function of these two variable and hence I am done actually. Okay. So, this is uh, what it is and so as uh, the advantages are like this it retains all the advantages of the critique it eliminates the XN network and hence it also eliminates the iterative training between XN and critic networks actually. So, these are the advantages which is which saves us lot of uh, training time actually in a way it also eliminates some of these approximations involved from from critic network anytime you have a network which is a function approximation that approximation error is also gone by eliminating that actually. And it also leads us this uh, this consistency the quick training sort of ideas and all that way. So, that is uh, single network adaptive critique. So, how do you how it is done let us uh, go back to the uh, the structure again. So, we have x k we have a critic network to train. So, we have got uh, lambda k plus 1 all that you are assuming here is critic network is optimal at t k plus 1 while you are training for t k. So, I am x k I will get lambda k plus 1 once I use this x k lambda k plus 1 in optimal control I will get u k. And now that x k and u k is available I will use it in state equation and get x k plus 1. And because I am my x k plus 1 is available I can use it in critic network to get lambda k plus 2 rather. And because x k plus 1 and lambda k plus 2 is available I can put it in a coasted equation and get lambda k plus 1 rather actually ok. So, what I am getting here is uh, this is the desired lambda k plus 1 and this is my actual lambda k plus 1. So, the difference between that is error and based on that I will, uh, I will minimize that to train this network actually ok. So, remember this optimal control state equation and co state equation all the three equations are used in the single structure basically there. So, that results in simplified algorithm programming becomes simple the training time saves and all sort of things actually. How do you initialize? Uh, remember, the LQR solution can give us only this lambda k is some x k, uh, it is not a lambda k plus 1 is not available. So, how do you do that? But we know that this is also available, so and hence we can construct it. That means, lambda k plus 1 is nothing but uh, this is a constant matrix SD into a k plus 1, but x k plus 1 you can substitute the state equation, linearized state equation, u k you can substitute back as a function of x k, and hence you will get something like lambda k plus 1 is a function of x k. So, using this relationship you can pretend the networks and then go for the training actually. 
So now for rest of the time, I uh, will uh, talk about some two, three example problems and give you some sort of a comparison study uh, to see where, where performance improvement happens. Remember the result wise, it will not vary much if you do consistent training actually. Okay, but uh, but other things will matter. Okay, also remember this uh, this because of this assumption that uh, this uh, uh, lambda k plus one okay critical network is already optimal at t k plus one that you are repeatedly using, and uh, for that uh, there is a necessity of the cycle training. I mean this telescopic training and all that actually. So what it means is uh, okay. Let me let me picturally represent that. Suppose you talk about uh, a domain of training that means we, are, we know that our state let us say a, some sort of a scalar example this is my time and this is my x actually my x is going to vary but is going to vary within that actually no matter what wherever the initial condition it will vary but it will vary within that actually. So, this is this is the assumption actually whatever that. So, then I do not have to worry about the outside this bound and all that however, what I need to do is uh, I mean this is my total training data then uh, what I do need to do here is uh, Okay, something like this. Okay, even though I know that this is my x max and this is my x mean. Okay, okay. then what I do is I'll just slice this thing with a small domain first. Actually, I'll train this network in that domain because close to the zero line, uh, my pre-trained thing, which is uh, linearized expression and all, are, are valid actually. So I'll train this. Once it is done, I will expand this zone a little bit more. Once it is done, I will expand this little more, and once it is done, I will expand it a little more actually. Okay. So, this is initially starting with this domain, then starting with that, then going to that, and th that, and things like that. This is called telescopic training actually. And uh, while you enlarge the domain, uh, there is a reason for not forgetting also. That means, uh, even if you talk about some sort of a full domain, let us say, okay, this uh, you are generating something like uh, 1000 data points from there then about 10 percent I will still recommend that you keep on generating from here explicitly basically. That means, uh, this larger bound should be 900, then this smaller bound should be 100 actually. Okay. The reason for that is the error of the larger values should not eat away the error between uh, the smaller values actually. Okay. So, that means, uh, you should not forget the relationship close to 0 basically, that is the whole idea there. Yeah, that this uh, this idea is called telescopic training actually, which is invariably helpful. So all that is there. So there is a comparison study sort of thing. You know, this adaptive critic operates in this kind of uh, idea. You have action training, you have critic training, there is cycle training involved, and things like that. Whereas single network adaptive critic doesn't talk about that. It just trains in one single iteration sort of thing. Actually, there is no cycle training involved because there is no action networks per se. Actually, okay. there is only one set of networks there. So, uh, we will talk about three problems here. One is a standard scalar, same scalar problem that we discussed uh, in the previous lecture. The other one is a two dimensional thing, okay, two states actually. This is a first order equation, this is a second order equation. Again, a very standard benchmark problem, uh, Van der Poel's oscillator. There are reasons for that. This actually goes for limit cycle oscillations, and hence the control, if the control is not good, you will not be able to regulate the system, you will not be able to drive the states towards zero basically. Then I will extend that to a little more practical problem which talks about a third order system, coupled third order system which is a, a MEMS problem like uh, micro electro mechanical system, it is electrostatic actuator sort of thing. All right. So, first problem first, uh, this is a okay, uh, okay for all these things what you have done is a little bit older computer and all that needs to be same for all the exercise for a fair comparison. We use uh, something like a Pentium 3 processor with a little more little less uh, I mean 930 megahertz speed sort of thing. RAM was less 320 only. Software's use was Metla version 5.2. Now, versions are quite advanced. It is uh, almost like Metla 2012 is available actually, but uh, anyway that is uh, that is not the point. Neural network toolbox is also improving, but the, the exercise is carried out with a toolbox version 3.0 basically. Okay. And training algorithm used is something called LM algorithm, which is very standard in neural network techniques. So, kind of the most powerful algorithm that exists uh, in the network training domain actually. Okay. And the number of uh, runs per averaging is 10. So, also remember the, when you run this algorithm, there are other, th other processing things also goes on there. So, what you are doing here is uh, kind of taking the run 10 times and then trying kind of averaging out actually. So, it will smooth out some of the relationship there actually. It will smooth out some of the noisy relations, very less fluctuation, but it will actually smooth out uh, that part also basically in a way. 
So, this is this the scalar problem, we have the standard equation, we have a standard cost function also q and r equal to 1 1, then this is the cost function, this is the solution that we have derived in the previous lecture also. This is the benchmark problem because of the availability of closed form solution and hence you can compare your results with that actually. So, we have uh, first thing is discrete of the state equation using Euler integration of formula, discrete of the cost equation as well, discrete cost function as well. And the cost state equation can be derived using this uh, approximate dynamic programming results like this. An optimal control equation turns out to be like that. Remember, Q and R are both one here actually. So the network structures that is chosen is one four one one four one here adaptive critic. Here it is one four one. The convergence criteria selected is something like one percent. But here you have to select for two networks, and the cycle convergence also you need to select. That was selected very small actually. Remember, this is point zero two percent and things like that actually. It's not percentage per se. This is the absolute value here. Okay, so these are percentage errors, but this is absolute values actually. No. So you selected something like this, but this is actually not needed here because there is no cycle training here. Wherever things are needed, these are made compatible actually. So result wise, you see both results. Uh, we, this is adaptive critic results uh, compared with closed form solution, which is very close to each other. So adaptive critic is working. SNSC, uh, which is also working, in the, uh, this is also very close to the closed form solution. So, the point here is uh, both are working, it is not the, I mean, but okay, the control solution is also you can see that both are happening to be fairly close to the closed form solution actually. So, both are happening, that is not a problem, but uh, what is the, what is advantage in SNSC is time actually. So, let us see what happens here, uh, see the computational time sense, you can see that uh, number of iteration, that means the cycle training sort of things and all, it talks about some time of computation and all that. Wherever uh, SNSC talks about only iterations like this, see what you see here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 10 iterations if this uh, algorithm is supposed to converge actually. Then you go to the second iteration and third iteration like that actually. Here is not needed. So, what is done here is simply 1, 8 iterations here and you are done actually. Okay. So, essentially, uh, if you see all this, this uh, ultimately the time to train is what matters actually. Okay. And finally, if you see the total time taken for all these, you add up all that, you will get it something like total time here and here the total time is something like this. So, essentially, it turns out that uh, time of training is essentially 43 percent of adaptive critic in SNSC. So, that is roughly uh, kind of 40 percent you can say, which is a lo lot of advantage for bigger problems actually. Okay. Now, cost function sense. For each of the initial condition, you can you can actually evaluate the cost function and plot it and then the claim here is again, uh, cost functions are fairly similar to each other actually. So, what you are claiming here, both are both will work, but SNS will work slightly better in the sense uh, uh, of computational advantage actually primarily and it will also eliminate your other uh, programming difficulties and, and then small approximation errors also and things like that actually. Coming to the second second problem, this is a wonderful oscillator. Again, we will talk about a quadratic cost function and things like that. Cost function is discretized. Okay. State equation, remember, it is a two test, two state problem now. So, this is also discretized and written in the form of Euler integration. Co state equation can be derived uh, from the standard uh, co state equation that we discussed about. Okay. Optimal control is like this. So, using this thing, we will uh, we'll formulate this for problem. Okay. And then uh, again the selection criterion has to be selected properly. So, critic network, action network and then there is a 5 percent error here and then absolute values of uh, error in the cycle training is something like this. And wherever these uh, things are compatible, I mean wherever things possible, you need to be compatible. So, the critic network here is 262 structure, there is also 262 structure. And convergence criterion here is 5 percent, here is also 5 percent actually. Okay. And also there is one point to note here that uh, my own experience, I will recommend something like a breakup network actually. In other words, even though this critic network can be actually theoretically uh, solved in, in terms of uh, single network really, but because there are two outputs involved, I will rather prefer to have two sub networks, which uh, one sub network is 261 and otherwise 261 also. And then I will consider that the entire structure is something like a single network actually, but that is my own preference, it need not be like that always actually. So, this is like this uh, and then it, uh, once you do the comparison study, the Q and R are selected that way and here there is a cycle training ideas there, uh, sorry telescopic training ideas, first you train with a smaller domain, then enlarge it and then things like that. 
Okay, so this uh, first is five percent of the total domain, and then subsequently it is increased by five 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 percent is the null value actually. So again, you can see because there is no closed form solution, we cannot com we cannot compare individually, but uh, comparison with respect to SC and I mean adaptive critic and SNS is always possible. So we train both those things, both the, bo both ways we solve and then plot it together for the different initial conditions and all that actually. So you can see that position and velocity both are driven to zero. And remember, this is a limit cycle problem. In other words, if control is not zero for any non-zero initial condition, you will never be able to go towards zero-zero condition. Okay, you will not, you will never be able to drive the states towards zero. It will go towards the limit cycle. And what is limit cycle? By the way, those of you who don't know, you can see this. If I plot a phase plot, that means x versus x dot. Okay, what I am looking for is starting from something. I'll go to zero actually. That's not happening. So this is something like a closed from closed loop uh, function sort of thing. And this is happens to be stable limit cycle. That means if I start with anything, anything I will merge into the, into the limit cycle and then continue oscillating in the limit cycle actually. But ideally speaking, if I start somewhere, I learn, I want to go to zero actually. That is not going to happen unless my control is good actually. Okay. So that's the problem here. All right, so this is what it is. They both are working. However, comparison sense, performance comparison sense, you can see that the time taken is invariably half actually. Picture really it is is put in a bar chart sort of thing. Okay, so telescopic training time, if you see that, then the training time turns out to be half actually. And total training time, if you see, it's uh, believe it not exactly is 43 percent. It turn out to be okay. So the claim here is it is going to be slightly lesser than about 50 percent, or roughly about 50 percent of the time will be done actually. Cost function comparison again both happens to be similar, so that is not uh, much of a concern. But to make adaptive critic work, you really need to be lot more careful in your programming and all that compared to SNSC. Okay, so that's another big advantage looking from simplicity of the structure point of view actually. So finally, this is the electrostatic actuator problem. Okay, this is the system dynamics is something like this. There is a mechanical part which oscillates, and there, there is a charge part which is electrical actually. Okay. So what is the objective here is actually to maintain some sort of a gap. G stands for a gap actually. Okay, there are two. I think I have a picture somewhere. Okay, here. G stands for this. Okay, so this gap needs to be maintained at a particular value of G naught actually. Okay. So this is a in control input is your control voltage actually. Okay, V in is your control input. So this V input okay, has to be manipulated in such a way that G has to be maintained at a particular separation Z naught actually. Okay. The system okay. This is your spring mass damper. This is a, a spring and this is a damper. This is a mass which oscillates actually. There is a fixed plate. Okay, and this uh, the this gap is controlled by by driving this this um, voltage input actually. Okay. And there is a resistor involved here, which will, will have a current flow and things like that. That way. Yeah. All right. So this is what it is. Uh, this is the system dynamics, and then the cost function is something like this, which needs to be minimized. Okay. What what is x? That needs to be thought about actually. X is your state. What that state? I will derive it now. I mean, I'll tell you now. What is state actually? State has to be deviation state actually. So that means g g is not the state, uh, even though even though the dynamics is given in terms of g. But what you are considering is the difference actually. G minus G naught happens to be the state one one state actually. Okay. That we will see that. I will show you that actually. Also, the cost function also in the discretized form something like this. Okay. So ultimately, what you need is uh, your state equation. We write it in a in a state space form. So we define this Z one, Z two, Z three sort of thing. These are the states Q, Z, and Z dot. And then we write uh, control V as something like V input, and write this equation. These state equations will be given in the form of this Z1 dot, Z2 dot, Z3 dot, or function of Z1, Z2, Z3, as well as control input actually V in. Okay. So this is what we want to see in any given control uh, control uh, synthesis problem. We want to see it in the form of state space equation actually. So we wrote that in a state space equation. But now remember that the necessity of finding out the equilibrium states actually. Okay. So for that we need uh, this, this this problem has all these parameter values given something like this, okay. And then uh, at equilibrium point, what will happen? You consider this, uh, okay. You remember Z two is the G, and G is a desired value as is given to us actually, okay. So that is what you put it as, okay. And then make sure that the the equilibrium point condition Z dot is zero, 
that means all the, the, the derivatives would be 0 actually okay. and V2 is uh, I mean this, uh, this Z2 is 0 0.5 that is that is the desired value that, that we have. So, we have put 0 0.5 here okay, whatever Z2 there are 3 equations now in terms of 3 unknown variables and what are the unknown variables Z1, Z3 and V. So, Z3 is 0 okay, so that is 0 Z2 is already there. Okay. When Z1 can be solved from this equation, so that is already available actually. And on, once you have Z1, then you put it back here and, uh, and try to solve. No, no, sorry. Where the Z1 has to be solved from this equation, okay? And this turns out to be something like that. And once you have Z1, you put that equation in the first equation and solve for V actually. So that will give you the corresponding V naught. So this is the desired value of state at the operating point or equilibrium point, and this is the associated control value at that particular point actually. So, now that the desired states and control both are available, we can formulate the deviation dynamics and the, for that we define x as the deviation state, this is z minus z naught and u is the deviation control which is v minus v naught actually. So, with that definition, we can rewrite the system dynamics as something like this actually. So, these are all happening in the form of deviation states and deviation control now basically. So, this is a standard regulatory problem now. So, and hence we can select this uh, cost function quadratic and things like that actually that way. Remember the cost function was given in the form of uh, I mean x actually, not in the form of z. And this x is deviation state, and this u is deviation control actually. Okay. All right. So this is what it is, and this is the deviation state. So now we are ready. So uh, the cost function is I mean state equation discretized, and corresponding cost state equation is derived. Optimal control is also derived. Okay. So again the two structures needs to be compatible. So, max, I mean compatibility is maintained actually. The weightings are taken 1 1 and again the comparison results since time domain simulation both happens to be similar and hence uh, I mean both are uh, kind of uh, both work actually. Okay. So, the, I do not claim that one works better than the other. In fact, if theoretically speaking if uh, training is consistent, so AC is nothing but SNAC and vice versa actually. So, both the results are compatible. Similarly, if you see the these are two states, okay, this is charge and uh, Q and then the position uh, X, I mean V2, okay, this position is uh, Z2 basically. Okay. So, what you are getting is charge Q and position Z2 and then Z3 and then control actually. Okay. Remember this, so after you solve this, you can, uh, you can actually uh, recompute your original state because the definitions are already here. Okay. Once I get x and u, I can recompute my z and v actually. Z is nothing but z naught plus x and v is nothing but u plus v, sorry, u plus v naught. So, I compute this uh, v rather, okay, and uh, the corresponding z will be available actually from there. Okay. But you can also think about doing it other way around. You just simply compute v, so u equal to, I mean, this v equal to u plus v naught, then you have z naught initial condition. So, you have the original system dynamics, okay. This original system dynamics can be uh, simulated directly actually. With this system dynamics, once you have control and initial condition, you can simulate the system dynamics and validate your equation from the nonlinear system point of view actually. So, that is what is done here. Okay. So, this is all that is done and it is uh, happening, it is working to it is working together and computational thing point of view, it is happening in an efficient way. It is very close to same 43 percent, now it is 44 percent actually. So, little less than half of the time will be done and your simplicity will be maintained that is more important actually. Okay. A cost function evaluation sense both are again equivalent actually, no not much actually. So, conclusions about SNAC, uh, SNAC retains all good features of adaptive critique, it eliminates the external network and hence it eliminates the approximation error due to external network and also there is no necessity of iterative training loops between external and critic networks. Computationally, it is simpler and hence program uh, pro writing the program and all that also becomes simpler and it leads sincerely leads to a significant amount of computational savings actually, okay. little more than half actually. But all that is happening with the assumption that SNS is applicable whenever the optimal control equation is explicitly or rather symbolically solvable for control in terms of state and cost state. that you should not forget actually. And if you have quadratic cost, uh, cost function and control a fine system dynamics, then this condition is always valid actually. Okay. So, just remember that. So, reference sense again I, I go back that okay, these two references are the backbone of this particular lecture actually. One is a chapter on a particular handbook, the other one is our own paper actually. And see more on that. All right. Thanks for attention actually.